Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin. I hope you are all safe and healthy. Today we are in Taipei, Taiwan, and this is the start of our new series where we are going to be doing things slightly different than normal. As you can see, Sabrina and I are outside right now, and that is because the situation here with COVID-19 in Taiwan is quite stable. So it's all over the news right now that Taiwan is one of the best countries, if not the best country, in terms of handling, controlling, and preventing the virus. Well, there are countries like Taiwan who are exemplary. And I'm really proud to call Taiwan our home away from home and really grateful to be here right now. So we are fortunate to be in a country that day-to-day -day life has not been affected that much. Restaurants are still open, things are relatively normal, and because of that, we are still going to be able to make some videos for you. We are going to be making just as many videos as we feel comfortable doing so, and as many as we can safely make here in Taiwan. As you can see, today we are at Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. It's a beautiful place. We're gonna be showing you around, and then later we're going to be getting breakfast at a traditional Taiwanese breakfast joint. Also trying some street food, and then taking you to one of the most famous bakeries in all of Taiwan. There are four main structures at the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Park. The memorial building itself, the National Theater, and then the National Concert Hall, and a huge gate to enter into this big square that has these white tiles. It's a really picturesque place. Usually you'll find a lot more tourists here, but right now Taiwan isn't letting any tourists in, but it is kind of nice to be here and have no one here. It's really beautiful. Want to go up the stairs? Let's do it. So Taiwan definitely has a complex history and Chiang Kai-shek is regarded as one of the founding fathers of Taiwan. And from my understanding, you either love him or hate him. I'm not gonna get into that on this video, but regardless, this is a nice place to come and check out when you are in Taipei. Right now, uh, it's closed because of the virus to go into the actual uh, hall but usually they will have a changing of the guard, I think every hour, and that's really cool to watch too. So to our surprise, you can still enter the Memorial Hall. You just have to use a different entrance, and the changing of the guard is actually happening right now behind us, so it's still available to go see. You just have to go through a couple health checkpoints before you go in. This place is absolutely massive. The gardens are really beautiful from the top of these stairs. You can get a really good view of them. They're perfectly manicured. And there aren't many people here because this is quite a touristy place, but most local Taiwanese are still going about their day-to-day -day life. So we're actually gonna head to the breakfast restaurant now, which means time to put the masks up. Right now, it is mandatory that you wear the masks on the metro. Otherwise, it's about a 15,000 Taiwan dollar fine, which I think is like four or 500 USD. We've come to Da An Station. It was just quick two stops. Also, they are checking uh, with thermal cameras, checking your temperature, at least at most stations, and really keeping them clean, sanitized, lots of cleaners working. We're gonna walk to the breakfast place now. So this is the breakfast spot behind us. It's called Yonghe Soy Milk King, which right off the bat is a super cool name, but this place is 24 seven, always open so you can have breakfast, traditional Taiwanese breakfast at any time of day. A lot of breakfast joints operate that way 24 seven, and this place is really famous, so we're gonna go inside, try a bunch of different 
classic Taiwanese breakfast items. We have our first breakfast snack. This is the Yotiao Xiao Bing. So inside we have the Yotiao, which are these Taiwanese fried crullers. So this dough that's been stretched out to kind of look like a churro and then deep fried. And then it's inside of the Xiao Bing, which is the baked bread with a little bit of sesame seeds on top. So it's basically just a carb hamburger. There's really not much to it. Just deep fried bread inside of baked bread, but let's give it a try. The Xiaobing baked bread on the outside is very flaky and a very slight flavor of sesame. And then the Yotiao on the inside is kind of soft and pillowy, almost chewy. But what you really gotta do with this, or what I like to do at least, is take some sweet soy milk. So this is hot soy milk. This place is famous for their soy milk. And when you make a soy milk in small batches like this, it can be really high quality, really tasty stuff. So I like to actually just dip the whole thing. And look at, there's like a film on top of that. Awesome. And there's quite a lot of sugar in this. So let's try this. <laughs> that soy milk just brings the whole thing together, adds a little bit of sweetness, and just rounds it off with a nice soy flavor and turns this really plain carb overload into something really delicious. So our next dish is here. This is the Xiaolong Bao or the soup dumplings. This is a specialty here in Taiwan. So as you can see, they're made with a very delicate dumpling wrapper. And then they've been stuffed with a pork mixture which is full of a ton of pork fat. And when they steam it in the steam baskets, all of that fat renders into a soup. And then you get this beautiful dumpling. So also, there's ginger on the table. I'm gonna take that and put it into my sauce. And this sauce is made up of one part soy sauce and three parts, well, maybe even more than three parts vinegar, but that's the ratio, but we love a ton of vinegar. So I'm gonna put this right in. Oh yeah, take a little bit of that ginger. It's gonna be the perfect bite. So there's a little bit of a technique to this. Usually when they come out, they are steaming hot. So what you gotta do is break the skin, let that soup drizzle out. Oh yeah, take a little sip. And then you can go in for a bite. <laughs> you lost all the meat. The, the wrapper here is a little more thick. But that pork mixture, you can see right here, it's got green onions inside. It's super tender. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Next up is a really traditional Taiwanese breakfast item. This is the xian dojiang, or salty soy milk. And you can see, this is the same soy milk that we just had, but it's got this really interesting curdle texture to it. So what they do with this is they take hot soy milk and they mix it with black vinegar. The black vinegar acts as a coagulant and helps to curdle the soy milk and make that really unique texture. Then they mix it with a little bit of pickles, a little bit of dried small shrimp, some pork floss, some green onions, and then it's topped with some yotiao you can see here, and a little bit of oil. And what I like to do is take some of this chili oil on the table here and put a little bit of that because this is a savory dish unlike the other one that we just tried. And look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. And you can see that really unique texture. Let's try. Mm. That is awesome. Nothing at all like the sweet version of the soy milk. This has so many different ingredients in it. You wouldn't even know you're eating the same thing. It really masks this soy flavor with all those savory ingredients. Love it with the chili oil. Gives it that uh, depth, that spiciness, a little bit of smokiness. And the texture is just so interesting. Look at that, like curdled milk and then you gotta get some of those ingredients. They're all kind of hiding down at the bottom. There's this little shrimp, 
some pickles, some yo chow. Mm. That is satisfying. Having little shrimps in a breakfast item might be off-putting to some people, but rest assured, it adds umami and a savoriness. So we have another traditional Taiwanese breakfast item. This is the bao tzu. So we have a steamed bread stuffed with pork. Mm. That bread is nice and fluffy. It's very simple. There's not much flavor to it, but it's a really hearty breakfast item. Our last little treat for breakfast is this. This is the mi jiang. So this is a rice with peanut drink. So they uh, soak rice overnight and toast some peanuts and then blend them all together with some sugar and you get this kind of peanut rice smoothie. And if you're familiar with YouTuber Logan Beck, friend of ours, um, he is a mi jiang maniac. He loves this stuff. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever tried it before, which is kind of a shame, but let's try it out here. Wow, that is seriously thick, very viscous, almost like a, a whey protein drink. I think that rice makes the texture so unique because it's almost like sucking up mochi, like thinned out mochi with some water through a straw. It's really thick. Really good, typical, classic Taiwanese breakfast. I particularly love that salty soy milk. And actually, this is the first restaurant we ever ate breakfast at in Taiwan. So when we came here almost four years ago, we uh, arrived late in the evening, and then the next morning we came straight here. Successful breakfast at uh... Yonghe Soy Milk King. Things here haven't really changed that much, except they do have an English menu here, which is definitely handy. So definitely check this place out next time you come to Taipei. We'll put the information for the directions down in the description box. One of the best parts of that restaurant is how cheap it was. Everything we had right there was 150 Taiwan dollars. Some of the items were only 15 NT, so super, super cheap. We're walking down the street now to go check out Da'an Park, Da'an Forest Park. I think it's the biggest park in Taipei, but it's just a really nice place to take a stroll. Check this thing out here. I've never seen this before. This thing dispenses mosquito repellent. So you step on this right here and it should come out. Do I gotta pump it? Oh yeah. Look at it. So cool. There is a lot of mosquitoes. Great. <laughs> it feels so gross. It smells it's really sticky. Bad. Ugh. A lot of wildlife here in Da'an Forest Park. Saw some squirrels, saw some birds, some turtles, lots of puppos. And this is just a really nice place to come walk. We love coming here uh, all the time. And especially now, like Tuesday morning, really peaceful, not very many people here. And there's this really cool little lake where you can do some bird watching. <laughs> So there are a ton of birds behind us in this like tree area in the middle of the lake and there's a little board in the park that you can use to identify the different types of birds and the one that we see the most behind me Nisitocorax, Nisitocorax. <laughs> I don't think I'm saying that right, but that is the scientific name. That's all I know. Uh, and they're the ones that are mostly dominating this little tree area. Oh my God. Oh my God, he's gonna jump on my head. So there's a lot going on in the park. It's quite expansive and there's a lot to see uh, near this little bird lake here, it kind of stinks really bad. You can smell all of those birds. There's gonna be hundreds of them over there. 
and they're just crapping in that lake like crazy and <laughs> it freaks. So here in Da'an Park and lots of parks around Taiwan, you might spot these pathways that have these rocks kind of sticking out of the ground and you might be wondering what it's for. And from my understanding, it's actually like a massage for the feet, but it's really painful, but I'm gonna do it for the camera. So take your shoes off. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Oh, I can't say this feels good at all. I don't know how much of a massage that really is. That just hurts a lot. What do you think? This is awful. No. I made a couple steps, and I'm gonna turn right around. So we've been at the park now for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and we're going to head to get a little snack that's pretty close by that we've never tried before, but I'm really looking forward to trying it out. street food snack. There was this little stall that looks very unassuming, except there is a line of people out front. And no, they are not serving fried chicken. Actually, this is a radish cake. So it's stuffed dough with daikon radish, shredded daikon radish, a little bit of green onions. And I'm really not sure what the hype is all about, but uh, it just kind of looks almost like a deep fried donut, but there's a big line there. So let me try this out. I'm gonna try not to burn myself. Look at that. Okay, it only took me one bite to get what all the hype is about. That is awesome. It is stuffed full, like overflowing with that shredded daikon radish. The radish has a little bit of a sweetness and also a little bit of a sourness. And then there's definitely some salt in there. It's very oily and very crispy on the outside. But that radish is almost juicy. It's really saturated with um, water and not the oil. Luckily the oil hasn't penetrated inside, but just look at the amount of radish that is packed into there. It is really good. It doesn't look like much, but that is seriously a flavor bomb. Woo, that's hot. They have this huge vat of oil at the stall and it is just frying away. A couple different types of fried dough. This one is with radish, but they also have ones with just green onions, and you can also get an egg on top too. But just such a huge display and such hot oil, just frying away all of the different items. So radish is made into a couple different traditional Taiwanese breakfast items here, but we've never actually had this version where it's shredded up and put in this little bun and served on the street. So it's a very cool street side snack. So I think we made a slight mistake at not getting sauce for the radish cake. It would have went really well with that sauce. They had a couple different kinds, but I would have gotten the chili bean paste sauce, but that's okay, it was still really tasty. So we're heading to the Metro now to take you to the famous Taiwanese traditional bakery. So I need to go from here all the way over to Nanjing San. Falling asleep after that long train ride and all of those carbs. I think this might be the first time we've ever filmed a video in Taiwan with no rice or noodles I in know, the video. <laughs> I know, All bread today, all yeah. carbs. And we're going to the bakery. So this is the spot behind me, it's called Chia De. It's been open since 1975. Some say it's the best traditional bakery here in Taiwan and it's certainly one of the most famous. There's usually a line, we're here about 2.15 p.m. on a Tuesday, so there's not too many people. Let's go inside and pick out some treats to try. Mm. 
So they're restricting the amount of people that can come inside the bakery to I think only about 10 or 12 people, but right now it's not too busy and masks are a must inside. You need to wear them to be allowed in. They're also checking uh, your temperature on your forehead as you come in and spraying your hand with hand sanitizer. So lots of measures, it's actually a really good thing. And a lot of places in Taiwan, especially Taipei, are doing this right now. So the way it works is you just grab a tray as you come in and a lot of people are buying these things by the dozens but we're just going to get a couple different kinds of variety to try uh, back at our apartment. They use a lot of traditional ingredients like salted egg yolk, also red bean and even with the mask it smells absolutely incredible in here. Alright, first things first, when we get home, gotta wash the hands. Let's make some tea now. So today we've got some oolong tea from Taiwan. So we have our big bag of chat to pastries here and we got a variety of things. I'm just gonna stick my hand in and we've got the moon cake. So this is famous to eat at the mid autumn festival and there are different varieties, but we got the one that is stuffed with red bean and salted egg yolk. All right, let's open this up. And I really love these little things. And I think they either rub it with like an egg wash or uh, maybe butter to get that nice flaky layer. And I've actually got a knife here. We wanna to try to cut it open so we can see. Oh man, I think I might destroy it. But we wanna to try to see what's inside. Okay, there we go. You can see that nice purple uh, red bean there and then the nice orange yellow egg on the inside, salted egg yolk. Mm. Mm. The pastry exterior is ridiculously flaky. It completely crumbles in your mouth. Then that red bean is nice and sweet and it's got a really kind of thick, uh, almost chewy texture to it. Or in Taiwan they call it Q, QQ. And then the egg yolk in the inside is like a hard boiled egg, but it's definitely got some savoriness to it. That's really good. Mm. Next up we have these massive egg tarts and these are heavy and they're deep. Let's go. Mmm. Oh my. <laughs> it's crumbling. That is huge. So that egg tart is just a little sweet. It's very, very eggy. It's got a very strong egg flavor and a lot of that sweetness is coming from this crust, which is really soft. It's really fresh. Next up is this one, which is much bigger than the moon cake. And this one they call the Trinity Q cake. Love the name once again. And this one's stuffed with egg yolk. Once again, salted egg yolk, red bean, and this time with mochi. All right, try not to break it. Oh man, this one's even softer than the last one. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, you can see the mochi right there, and then the red bean and that egg yolk. Pretty similar, but with mochi, really interesting. Let's give this a try. Check out this gap between the top layer and then the next layer. It is really flaky. Try this one. Mm. Mm -hmm. The pastry on that one 
feels really dry. There are so many layers though. And then the inside is completely enveloped in the mochi. It becomes this really kind of glutinous, chewy mass in your mouth. All right, next up is the strawberry pastry. Should I do that, Luke, or should I do that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Here we go. All right. All right. Whoa. That looks like real strawberry in there, but definitely a lot of sugar added. Mm. Oh my goodness. There are these things at night markets. Candied strawberry. And that's exactly what this tastes like inside. Except there's no hard pieces at all. It completely just melts away in your mouth. Mmm. That was delicious. And flavor of strawberry jam mixed in. That's really good. So this one is their number one, the pineapple cake. It's the exact same as the strawberry one that Sabrina tried, but with the original filling of pineapple. And some people say that Chia De is the best pineapple cakes in all of Taiwan. Some people say Sunny Hills and lots of different brands, but uh, I really like this one. Let's try it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like concentrated pineapple. Yeah. I think more so than the filling, it's really all about that exterior. And this one here at Chad De has this super crumbly, almost shortbread like pastry around the outside. I love it. But this is so many pastries, we are getting stuffed. So last but not least is the nougat green onion pastry. So we have a green onion cracker. I'm not sure if it's salted or if it's sugar. There's some scallions and then this sticky, sticky nougat <laughs> holding them together. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so the nougat is quite sweet. Actually, it doesn't have much flavor other than that. It kind of is like the white filling of an Oreo. And then the crackers are really salty and with like a, almost like a sour cream and onion flavor. It's a very strange combination, but not actually that bad. Just a little strange at first. Wow, we are completely stuffed to so many pastries right there and <laughs> so many carbs today, but great day of eating here in Taipei. Um, as you could tell, the content type is changing slightly with this ongoing virus, but as I mentioned at the start of this video, Taiwan is doing a phenomenal job at controlling this virus as of now, and we feel very safe filming our videos out and about. And as you could probably tell, it's pretty much business as usual here, just with a lot of mask wearing. So very grateful to be in a place like Taiwan where we can continue making these videos for you, and we will continue to do so as long as we feel it is safe. Yeah, and if you guys wanna consider supporting our channel, head over to our Patreon page. We've just uh, revamped the entire thing. We've added some new awesome perks, including our personal curated food map. So this is supposed to take the hassle out of planning your next trip. There are personal places that we have visited and we personally recommend, some of them that we have not even filmed yet, so some that have never been seen before. So we have food maps and other than that, we have awesome monthly blooper reels, live streams, all kinds of awesome stuff. So head over to our Patreon page. The link is down in the description box. Go check it out if you wanna continue supporting our channel. Yeah, thank you guys. It would mean the world to us if you could support us and help us out. Hope you guys are all safe and healthy and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next episode of Chopstick Travel from Taiwan soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.